Look at the tail of the tape brought to you by FightNews.com. This will show us a few things. You'll see that Lou Savarese is a bigger man. He's uh, two and a half inches taller, 23 pounds heavier, three years younger, and he has a couple of inches in reach advantage over Evander Holyfield. David, the rules. All right, 10 points to the winner of a round. No three knockdown rule or standing eight count. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell at all. Only the referee can stop the fight. Physicians do have input. And I want to tag that comment that Evander made to Frank. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Don Haskins Center, the road to the heavyweight championship begins right here in El Paso, Texas. Here presented by main events in association with Real Deal Events and the University of Texas at El Paso. This is tonight's main attraction. 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. The judges scoring this bout are Glenn Crocker, Ray Hawkins, and Jerry Wright. Our referee, Jesse Reyes. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he steps into the ring wearing silver trunks and weighing in at 242 pounds. As a pro, he maintains an impressive record consisting of 46 victories with only six losses and 38 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Houston, Texas, Big Lou. Across the ring in the red corner. He steps in wearing white, trimmed in purple and red, with an official weight of 219 pounds. As an amateur, he was named the most outstanding fighter of the 1984 Olympics, taking home a bronze medal. Since then, he has compiled one of the most impressive records in professional boxing history with 41 victories, with only eight losses, two draws, and 27 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The former undisputed cruiserweight champion, former undisputed heavyweight, and the only four-time heavyweight champion in the history of boxing. From Atlanta, Georgia, Evander, the championship fight, I'll tell you, I'm psyched. Well, it has consequences on that level for both of these guys if they want to be back. And you know, they've been there. So yeah, it should have that feel, and it does. So with the final instructions of Jesse Reyes, we're set to go. We van there. Look at him. Look at the condition this guy's in. Yeah, he's 44. And this guy's 41. He's a mountain of a man, 6'5", 242 pounds, and he can bang. Evander's got to work to the inside of the long jab of Lou Savarese. Let's see how it unfolds. You know the ramifications, the road to the heavyweight title, and it can happen. Lest you think stranger things, as Oliver McCall pulled off a major upset and is back in the thick of things, certainly Evander Holyfield or Lou Savarese can do it. And if either guy can make it a spectacular victory, that will accelerate the pace even more. Lou is slow with his punches. Evander waiting to see what he can do. An excellent boxer, very smart. Wants to avoid fighting outside here. Try to get on the inside. And he knows how to do that. When you're the shorter fighter, sometimes it's a good idea to make yourself even smaller. Don't right. try to make yourself bigger. You want to bob and weave. You want to get inside. You want to get that guy to punch over the top and miss you and then take advantage of being small. Lou Samaris figured that Evander Holofield wanted this fight to end early, and he would like to extend it into the later rounds. But Lou Savarese dropped Buster Douglas in the first round, so he is still an opportunist. Savarese, big and tall, not doing much here to get things going. Uh, and until he does do something to get things going, you'll see Holofield wait back, too. Holofield's best strength has been to get inside a guy's jab and then land three or four quick punches and get out. 
again to try to do what he can do right there, trying to get that jab through. Savarich's not really popping and not throwing the right hand at all day. No, he hasn't really decided to gamble yet. These guys are in the stage of seeing what works, getting in there, trying to be comfortable. A slow-moving first round. It's been a reluctant Lou Savarich, but guess what? He's also kept Evander Holyfield at bay. You see that chopping right hand in her way? He says, hey, watch the head. He goes to Lupe right away, and this is a concern that he has, and all fighters must have with Evander. Evander has been accused of using the head as the third punch. Yes. Uh, uh, the third the hand, I should say. And right away, uh, Lou is looking for something to complain about. Well, and you lose Savarese. The minute you throw that right hand, that's your first gamble in this fight. So he'll do it when he's ready. Because when you throw the right hand, Holofield will try to slip inside and throw short, powerful punches. Savarese up on his toes, been pretty successful from the outside. Evander hasn't been able to work his way into him. One thing I don't like about Savarese is the big guy that he is. He's wearing those short shoes. He's got those little things that are down around his ankle. I'd like to see a big guy with more ankle support than that. That's a good right hand by Holofield getting in. The speed getting through the jab of Savarese. A chopping right hand that time by Savarese. And he's cut. Savarese is cut, and you hope that's not the heads. Well, he was complaining about that before the fight closing seconds of round number one. The bell ends round number one, and there's a cut on the forehead of Lou Savarese. Let's see exactly where the cut is. Savarese has a great cut man in Joe Souza working his corner, so he couldn't have a better man in there. This is Evander, of course. That was a good round. That's a good one. Look, the guy already cut. You understand? So just keep, keep doing what you're doing, okay? Just keep doing what you're doing with the chest, okay? Relax. Give me a big deep breath. There you go. Boy, good that round. has all the makings of a hit. Oh, they gotta watch his I, I haven't got any indication caught, whether that was a glove or whether that was a head. We're going to be able to get another look at it. Slow it down. It was a left hand that pulled it through. Head came up later, but the left hand opened it up. You're absolutely right, David. I checked with uh, Lupe, uh, rather uh, Jesse uh, Reyes, the um, referee, and Jesse says, yeah, it was by a punch. That's significant, folks. Yes, because ah. if it were to be stopped by that, it's a TKO rather than a technical draw. Remember, inside of four rounds, if it's uh, an accidental headbutt, and in this case, it's been ruled by a punch, so that's very significant. As Dave said, it would be a technical knockout victory if that uh, cut is caused the ending of the fight. So he's already cut in the first round of Severis. Holyfield probably won the first round. Is Holyfield on the assault? Oh, he's getting to him. He's really getting to him with the power on the inside, the right hand, and then getting through Savarese. Savarese, I think, Dave feels that like maybe the he uh, head had something to do with that, and he's a little distracted by that. But his distraction should be, forget that, throw right hands. He's not throwing any right hands. He's too tentative. He's got to get into the fight. Holyfield has his juices flowing. Savarese doesn't have his juices flowing yet. Now, here he goes, trying to get into it a bit more now, with a minute gone in round number two. Savarese up on his toes, trying to do something, but he needs to go with some right hand lead power shots. You know what he's got to do? He's got to get mad. His right hand looks almost awful on the inside. Here he is now trying to pick it up just a little bit. But this is where Evander loved the fight in here. Right, right. Go ahead, jostle yeah. around. Sooner or later, he'll work a hand free, crack you with an uppercut. And he'll get two shots in because Holofield has always had the good speed on the inside. This is what Savarese has to do. Jab and then try the right hand off the jab. And then maybe get Holofield to come in and sucker him into an uppercut. But he has to start with the jab. Lou looks to me like his jaw's hanging down, like he's trying to suck in some oxygen, too. We mentioned a couple of times this evening, and it is significant. We have a situation here involving height and altitude. Uh, but it has only affected one fighter to this point. Holofield still looks fresh, and Lou Savarese is sucking wind early in this fight. Or at least it appears to be. Don't forget the tremendous training regimen that he bend his head, and of course, Tim Hallmark was working the throughout his career. This move picking up the pace, but nothing really landed. Back to 
Orton's Holyfield now with an overhand right of his own. Right. And right. Lou Savarese looking over at the referee looking for a headbutting call. You can't buy that call. You have to take it into your own hands. Do the uppercut, push the guy off if you don't want him inside with your head. Double jab, that will keep him away too. Yeah, he's not double jabbing, he's not throwing enough right hands, he's not getting rough enough. Listen, Johnny Ruiz went to the Evander Holyfield School of Rough Fighting, and he passed it magna cum laude. In all three of those fights, they were tough, hard fights. They're inside fighting, but you got to fight this guy tough. If you let this guy come in the way he can, Evander will just outmuscle you. And that's pretty much what he's doing to Luis Savarese to this point. Looping right hand, Frank Savarese. Savarese now hangs on. Separated by Jesse Reyes. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. The reflexes of Holyfield, he threw the right hand right after the left hook. So it's a sharp reflex of action. As the bell ends round two, what you pointed out in the closing seconds of that round is key. Usually you see, and I asked Ronnie Shields, do you see anything? I don't expect the fighter to tell me that he's losing anything because you don't feel the timing. But his timing does look good to me tonight. I know, the body shot hurt him. That one good rip to the body picked his fucking leg. Holofield works his way inside. Right hand, then backs up. Good right hand toward the ear. This is when he had Lou Savarese in some trouble. The left hooks pouring through. Now Savarese landed the body shot, and this is what the corner said hurt Evander Holofield. Then he looks over at the referee, and uh, Holofield came right back at him. So if Holofield got away with a little bit of head action there in the first round, Lou got away with two hellacious low blows in the second round. Here we go to round number three. The Colonel Bob Sherman here with Dave Bontempo. You're watching main events boxing. The Don Haskins Center here in El Paso, Texas. Event the Holyfield on the left of your screen. Four-time heavyweight champion of the world. Undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Bronze medalist in 84 at the Olympic Games. Lou Savarese, a guy who wants to move from acting to having one more shot at the heavyweight title. But Holyfield's outboxing him to the first two. And Evander, the most important thing here, is not showing any signs of fatigue or huffing and puffing at this altitude of 5,000 feet here in El Paso. He's in his second gear. He looks like his timing is there. And you want to know something from what Ronnie Shields said? I almost have to agree with him. Evander looks terrific to me. Of course, he's got a perfect opponent and a great big lumbering guy like uh, Lou Savarese. But he's working his way inside, doing the double jab, then bobbing and weaving, and then firing a punch. There's the Savarese uppercut. Did it change the fight? Yes, he did. He caught him with a big uppercut, and that stunned Evander. Now let's see what Evander does with it. He's in such magnificent shape, he's able to gobble it up. But Savarese stunned him with that uppercut. Maybe the best punch of the fight. This guy, don't forget, is 6'5 and weighs 242 pounds. When you get nailed with a guy that size, one punch can change the course of a mighty river. In other words, Evander cruising along and all of a sudden stunned. That's the great thing about the heavyweight division. And Savarese continues to go back to that uppercut. He senses an opening and a window here. Hey, so far, you people that bought this fight, you can't complain. We got a whale of a heavyweight Stop. fight here. Stop. How about this with a minute 29 seconds to go in the third round? This is better than some of the championship heavyweight fights I've seen in the last year, Dave. Yeah, this is really good. These guys are playing off the keys, and they're showing a lot of good pace to this fight. They're taking chances. They're taking chances, which you really have to love. Well, you said in the first round that uh, Savarese has to take chances. He did. Now Holyfield coming to the inside where he wants to fight the fight. How about this? You tuned in for a warm-up fight. You got a championship caliber heavyweight battle. Here. You can't avoid and you can't really not want to watch Evander Holyfield. Big Siegel's here from New York. A lot of the big writers came just to see what he could do. Don't forget this guy's a sure hell of a Another low blow by Savarese. Look at Evander battle back. How about this stuff, folks? He makes a nice turn on the inside and lands two. Vintage Holofield on the inside, landing a couple, and those punches add up over the course of time. And he gets a lot on them, and he's patient enough to go back to it time after time. The biggest thing is there's no noticeable lack of the ability to pull the trigger by Evander. Severis continues to complain, and that's just going to frustrate him. He's got to fight. I agree with him. He's frustrated. Throw some low blows. Battle back. This is a street war now. You Nothing want... classic here in terms of boxing as the bell ends round three. You don't want to telegraph weakness or frustration to your opponent. 
Hey, can you give that round to Savarese based okay. on the heavy of blows? Good. Is there a case for that? There's a case. I'm giving it to him. Okay. Don't get his guy no confidence. The jab is working beautiful for you, but yeah, you're not, now you're not using it. Every time okay? it works. Now you're not using it. Get your rhythm. The rhythm behind the jab. Now look. I thought some of the heavier blows were landed by him as we listened to Ronnie now. You gotta start hitting him in the body a little bit, all right? But look, I need the uppercut too, hold it. Now you see he's dropping down the uppercut. Get down. Close, give me that cross and get down there. All right? And fire your uppercut behind it. Okay? Everything is okay. Now this is where Lou Savarese checks into the fight. Boom. Nice uppercut on the inside, tremendous shot, drives Holofield back, and it energizes Savarese for the rest of the round. He makes Evander Holofield stumble, and that put Lou Savarese into another gear. That reminded me of Kingston, Jamaica, so many years ago when a young George Foreman clipped a heavyweight oh. champ named Joe Frazier and lifted him off the canvas. Evander looked like he, he went uh, off the canvas for just a second with that one. This is round four, Don Haskins Center, El Paso, Texas. You're watching main events. Four-time world heavyweight champ Evander Holyfield with the trim down the side of his white trunks. Now to the right of your screen, Lou Savarese, the great big tall. 46 and 6 heavyweight with 38 knockouts. Buddy Van the Holyfield in the last round with a big uppercut that might have changed things. It was enough for me to give the round to Savarese. Holyfield, by and large, is outboxing him. By and large, has better hand speed. Very slick on the inside. Oh, big right hand! And Savarese is ready to go! He caught him with a big shot! He tries to hang on! He made the right hand it! It could be like that! But he's on clear streak. He needs to grab him and he a big shot. And again, Savarese continues to get play. Oh. It wasn't a head ah. shot, it was a body six. shot. The counts are six, six seven, eight. and eight. Lou Savarese oh, totally frustrated. Eight. He's not completely oh, back. A minute 50 oh. to go, Evander is going to finish him in the fourth round. He can't survive this day. The on comes right Evander hand. to set it up. Big right hand by Holyfield up the go. top. Savarese can't stop it. He's got to grab him here. He's got to buy time. He's not doing that. Watch the whole field right hand. It's there. And the uppercut is there. There's the left hook. There's the uppercut. Holyfield wants to start him and put the lights out. Kicking body shot. Now Lou finally hangs on. Past the midway point now. The crowd begins to chant. The crowd is on its feet. They're into this like there was a world title on the line, and there isn't. It's only a battle for contention. For a shot at the heavyweight title. Evander tries to work on him. He's let him off the hook a little bit with a minute to go in the fourth round. Evander digs low that time. And Evander catch him with that big right hand. Lou seems to get some of it back. Didn't think he could recover. Evander back to the jab, sets up the jab again. Digging body shots again. Bring down the hands of Lou Savarese. Where's the right hand, Evander? There it is, right there. Crack him to the side of the head. Lou might be ready to go again. Watch your hand. Watch your he hand. needs to tie up and buy the time, but he has to buy a lot of time. Savarese should throw something. Try the uppercut. A double jab first. Take a shot at something. He did land a good uppercut in the last round. You can't let the guy just keep flooding in on you. Apparently, he's going to survive this round with 20 seconds to go. But those pouring lefts won't keep Evander out. He'll dip and he'll time the right hand on the left hook. Evander in total break, control break. of this fight right now with 10 seconds to go in the fourth round. In a round that I really didn't think Lou Savarese could survive. As Lou coming back, he then exposes the left side of his head, but counters with the right hand and a left hook. The bell ends, and Savarese does survive the fourth round knockdown. And what a grueling ordeal. He has been through hell. The right hand by Holofield over the top of the lazy left hand by Savarese sets the tone of the round. And then leads to the knockdown and the near stoppage. It's got a lot of energy that round. We gotta be smart now. Let the right hand go a little bit more for me, okay? Let's take a look at how Evander Holofield takes back the momentum from what had been a surging Savarese. The big right hand over the top, and then he pours it on, as he always does. Evander Holofield always has been a good and punitive finisher. Here he tries to do it. Savarese holds him at bay for a while, but Holofield is on him. Good ripping hook to the body after Savarese had the head covered. Tremendous right hand, then a left hand sets up the downfall beautiful right hand by evander holofield that was flush that was highlight real material well he, he probably complained about evander's uh 
head hitting him because that punch hit him like a mule kick. <laughs> That's why he thought it was a head. Here we go, round number five at the Haskins Center in El Paso. He ran the Holyfield. Had Lou Severis down in the fourth, tried to finish him, but Lou hung in there. A lot of courage by Lou. But if he doesn't get that jab out there and start loading up some right hands, Evan is going to walk right through that powering jab. And that's how he eventually got caught, because he threw out a light right hand, and Evander countered it with a left hook that almost took his head off. Look how much more crisp, Dave, Evander is with those jabs now. And earlier, we talked about Savarese getting tired, and it shows up with where you had the left hand. It wasn't always in proper position. You try to take some liberties when you're a little tired, and that is where Holofield cracked him over the top. Go to the body, look at the left hand of Savarese. It betrays him here. He can't keep it up, and Holofield has a lot to shoot at. See, Holofield just did something there that was not showing the reflexes of a 44-year-old fighter. When Savarese loaded up his right hand, he bent down and away to his right, away from the right hand. That's instinct. That isn't something you can teach. That's a 44-year-old guy who's reacting like a 34-year-old guy. If you move the other way, you move into the punch, and you're going to get knocked out. This guy still has great instincts, still has great vision, which is so important for any athlete, especially a boxer, that an inch or two one way or the other can mean the difference between a knockout and a victory. Well, you know, he's 44, able to turn back the clock. And a, a rare feat. And he's doing it with hustle. And as always, he was the lighter fighter moving up to fight the heavyweights. He was always faster, and he would just wear them down with the quick combinations on the inside. And throughout his career, Holofield has stayed loyal to what got him there. Well, there's a 23-pound difference tonight to Savarese's favor, but Evander has never let weight be a difference in his fight. And this guy fights like a heavyweight. Why not? He's a four-time heavyweight champ, huh? You look back, though, you can't really think of guys that were faster than Holofield. He came up from the light heavyweight and cruiserweight division. Break, he carried break. the speed with him and always has had that hand speed edge over his heavyweight opponents. With the exception of Mike Tyson, who had equal hand right. speed, but Holyfield was able to figure out Mike Tyson, use that half step, get in the proper position, and then he kind of out-bullied the bully that night, and it frustrated Mike to the point where, well, in the second fight, he went to the ear-biting situation, which I'm sure for Mike was just total frustration. Hey, throughout all the years before that, Vander Holyfield was the only guy leading up to fighting Mike Tyson who had a plan to fight him even five years before it happened. The big difference again was he wasn't intimidated by Mike, and Mike at that stage in his career was still intimidating everybody. That's all history. This is tonight. This is for a shot at perhaps the title. Very, very near future for the winner of tonight's fight. A better round for Savarese, but he didn't land any punches, really, to speak of. That's a Holyfield round. And it's a round to get his bearings together, and, and now he has to go into full Listen, gear. If you stay if with the good jab, hold him, you're backing him up with the good jab. That's how you go catch this guy. You go catch him going back, okay? Now, every, everything is good. Taking a step back, let the right hand go, and then step over. All right. You gotta pull the trigger on that right hand when right oh, he comes in. Seems fairly really calm and composed there, Dave. I see it. Right yeah. nah, as he's getting right his, hand, he's as he's getting his wind okay? back. But and when he, he's only throwing one, he stopped throwing two jabs. He's only throwing one now, so we can counter. Okay. All right, here we go. We're coming up to round number six. The Colonel Bob Shorten here with Dave Von Sempo. That's Evenda Holyfield coming up the stool to the left, down to the right of your screen. Big Lou Savarese to the left of your screen. And already, Dave, I said it once before, and I'm saying it again, and now you folks that are watching don't mean to tell me this. This is a better fight than the heavyweight title fights that we've seen in recent history. This is a terrific fight. Yeah, it really is. A good, fast pace set by Holofield, Savarese taking some chances, enough in this fight to make it interesting. He's gambling at times with his right hand, trying to catch Holofield. He's got a second win back for the moment, and this is the time for Lou Savarese to take a shot. Well, he took the shot with the right hand that time and just clipped the chin of Evander. Evander again wants to work on the inside. Oh, nice uppercut by Lou, chopping right hand. That's the conditioning of Holyfield, because it just gives him an adrenaline flow. And look at Savarese continually frustrated by the heads coming together. And now Jesse Reyes says, hey, just keep it clean in here, guys. A nice fight going on here. 
He made a scoring up a little bit that, that time. I almost thought he was going to fight as a southpaw, but he's back off the docks right now. Jabbing, jabbing Evanda. Watch the uppercut. Overhand right misses by Lou Savarese. Who's going to close the gap? That's right. His uppercut is successful. He needs to throw more of them. And he's going to the body roll. He's taking chances more in this round. He's getting a sense of trying to turn the fight around, as he did in round three. Round four, he was nearly out. And round five, he was getting the cobwebs out. So this is maybe the second time in the fight that Savarese will attempt to run, but Holofield has had more runs. Uh, this is the best uh, round since the third round for Lou Savarese, but he's got to make it definitive because it's a minute and 15 seconds to go in this round. He's got to continue. He's got to land some uppercuts. He's got to land the right hand. He's not throwing an upright hand. I love his uppercut. Evander has been able to gobble it up. Wow, with the left hand that time is Savarese. Evander back with the jab, up in his toes, bounces left, bounces right, goes downstairs. Right. Lou right. gets tied up this time by Evander. Boy, Evander is so slick, David. Yeah, he really is. And you know what the interesting thing of guys in their 40s, there is one element that comes into play. No matter what else they're doing right, the defensive reflexes are not as sharp. They're going to get hit with more shots. And that's more exciting for the fans watching because, you know, there are opportunities. Savarese has been outgunned, but he's had two or three opportunities in this fight. He looked back to the second Leonard Hearns fight. They couldn't stop anything. It was a great fight. There are opportunities. Has to be with a guy in his 40s. You'll get a few more punching chances at him. Hey, combined ages of 87. They're fighting like guys with combined ages of 42. We're seeing a lot of heart from these guys. We're seeing a lot of dipping, bobbing, weaving. And you know what? You're going to be just a little slow stopping some punches, which is natural. And that's also bringing the kind of the fans. Nice jab again by Evander. Has he done enough to win this round? And oh, man, he clips him again. That's a very, very close round. I'm going to give it to Savarese based on the uppercuts that I thought he caught him with. Uh, the judges will remember this round, Dave, because if it's close in the judging, it might be a little controversial in terms of this sixth round. I'm giving it to Savarese. That has the earmarks of a split round on the cards when we look back. So, uh, what's going on? Pick it up for me, okay? You start every time you throw the right hand. As Savarese came out with more purpose in round six, and that helped. Sweet uppercut there, and then the good chopping right hand. But Holofield's right back on him and continuing the good pace. Savarese squares here, gets the uppercut again against an advancing Holofield, and this is where he's able to square himself, plant his feet, and that's the conditioning and stamina. That time, Lou Savarese had it. Well, after being oh, down in the fourth round was Luke Savarese, and there was plenty of time. As I recall, it was only about a minute, maybe 22 seconds in when he went down, and there was loads of time oh. for Evander to finish him off. I never thought that Lou would be able to survive the fourth round. He came back, got in the fight again in the fifth, and I thought he may have eked out the sixth round. I've got it a three-round, a three three-point fight so far for Evander Holyfield. Seven, eight, nine, and ten to go. This is round seven, Haskins Center, El Paso, Texas. Dave Von Temple working with me and the Colonel Bob Sheridan. Your principals, Evander the Holyfield, four-time world heavyweight champ, undisputed cruiserweight champ. Going to work at Savarese. He clicks Savarese with a pretty good right hand, then ties him up on the inside. Lou's got to throw more uppercuts, got to throw more right hands. Evander fighting the perfect fight, David. He really has done a nice job on the inside. And you know what? You don't see cheap and useless punches from Holyfield. Field. Everything is the max that he can deliver. And that's why eventually his punches catch up with guys. They're just enough on them. He puts them together with the speed, and he gets it in there. He doesn't have any throwaway punches. There's a lot on them. When you take a look at the top 10 heavyweights, Shannon Briggs, Nikolai Valua, Sergei Lyakovich, Lehman Brewster, Johnny Ruiz, all in Ring Magazine's top 10. There's a few guys there I see Van that could really compete with. Yes. I don't want to see Ruiz Holyfield again, but I wouldn't mind seeing him against any of those other guys to bring himself into the top 10 if he doesn't get a title shot based on this. Should he win? He hasn't won this one yet. A big crack by Savarese. Evander gobbles it up and comes right back. See that little elbow? Little, uh, little flip for the elbow by Evander to set him up? Oh, nice. I mean, he really was biting down in his uh, mouth at uh, that time to throw with all he can. That's what you call sitting down on punches. Bend your leg, grit your teeth. Let it fly. Right, guys. And you know, the fact is, you're watching a guy who came up from another division, 
and did well as a puncher throughout his career. Savaris is the bigger man, and he's trying to prove it here. He won't back up. He won't give ground to Evander the Holyfield. Tell you, I'm enjoying this fight. I hope wherever you're watching around the world, or across the United States, wherever you are, you gotta like it. What can you say? I'm not hyping this fight. This is going to come down to the volume of Holyfield versus the big shots that Savaris has been able to get in if this trend continues for four more rounds. Remembers Michael Moore found that you can cruise along in a heavyweight fight so long, so long when you get a big guy like a Savaris. Or in the case of his uh, last uh, championship, George Foreman, anything can happen. That's why I love the heavyweight division. With 16 seconds to go, this is another close round, Dave. Yeah, Savaris has managed to get into the fight, but he takes two more there, and Holofield may have taken it away right here. Well, there's a round that was dead even, and then there were three big shots at the end by Holyfield. And in the close round, when you see that in the last few seconds, I give that round to Evander Holyfield. I need more of my hands, man. Pay attention. How have you got I it scored, Dave? Three points uh, before the knockdowns, Look, or four points for Evander Holyfield here. Is back in all day long. And that's pretty like, much the way I have it, too. And we're getting out of here. Okay? okay. Now, it's always good to come on late. Two jabs, nice strong right hand coming through by Holofield. And another good right hand and a left hook here on Lou Savaris. And that's a nice six punch exchange in a round that was in doubt. You'll leave this impression on the judges. Many times you walk around, you come out with the tank. How many rounds did Ray Leonard win like that, Muhammad Ali? Well, this is this where you come in? Well, we go to the final three rounds of this fight. It's scheduled for 10. I was surprised that Luke could get out of four, but that's his conditioning. That's his heart. And the altitude of El Paso, almost a mile high. This is round eight. Evander to the left of your screen. Lou to the right of your screen. Savarese and Holyfield. I'll tell you this, Savarese has got to throw some right hands. He's been making a living and surviving on uppercuts. Throw more of them, Lou. Evander, just keep doing what you're doing. Box and move. Slip the big punches. Roll up your right hand. Wow, with the left hand goes Evander Holyfield. Lou just outside that. By the way, Dave, we found out we've known Evander for years and Lou for quite a few years. Two of the nicest guys in, in, in all of athletics, not just boxing. Yeah, and uh, they take the opposite track. Naturally, they go in there, but outside, they're, they're, they're good guys. And that's one reason they've had longevity an ability to relate. And, and be in shape and win some some big fights. And here is Savarese, got himself into the fight in round six and round seven, but he's got to step on that gas pedal because he dug the early hole and the knockdown in round four compounded that. And he's got to pick up the pace because he then is setting the pace right now. He's busy with the head, there's a left hook. That one whistles past the nose of Savarese. Savarese gets tied up on the inside, keeps throwing his right hands. Lou has got to unload some shots, or he's just going to lose this fight by attrition. He's got to catch him with an uppercut. He's got to throw more right hands. See, Vanda blocked that right hand that time. That's reflexes. That's the one key thing that I'm seeing with Evander Holyfield. But has made a believer out of me that Evander Holyfield can compete in this day's heavyweight top 10 Break. division right now. He's ready to compete Break. right now. In fact, he almost deserves a world title shot. Yeah, he's gotten that reflexive action. He's come in strong, good pace throughout the fight. Yeah, here it is, round eight. Hasn't had any rounds off. He hasn't tried to do the thing we've seen older fighters try, tying up on the inside, buying time, shoving off. He's just been nonstop coming at a guy who is quite game, but it's a good pace. Yeah, there are guys that he would beat right now. Well, you know, in his comeback ten. fight, Jeremy Bates was handpicked to see how he could compete again. Bates, of course, you know, lost to Andrew Galata, another aging heavyweight that's sneaking back into the picture with all of them a call. And then he had the stoppage over Vinny Mataloni, but I thought his victory over Fraser Kendo was key because it went the distance and he showed that he had the stamina. He's showing that again tonight. He just flat out boxing seven reached out. I, I mean, just to, for supposition, if this Holofield had showed up last November, he would have beaten Lyakovich. For sure, for sure. No disrespect to Sergey, because I know he's turned in tonight, and he's a good friend, but 
We're going to call it like it is, Davey yeah, Boy. That's right. And, you know, you, you never know if you can duplicate that effort. But if you put this effort back last November, he wins. Uh, that's how strong he's been here. The bell ends round eight, and it gets more interesting as the rounds tick by. You work too hard to be taken off round. Hey, Ronnie's first comment, you work too hard to be taken off rounds. And he's right. Let's see if he can pick up the pace for nine and ten. He bandit took off the eighth round. I still think he won the round. Here's Holofield, right hand looping in, left hand scoring through, continuing to try to do the number inside against Savarese. Two good shots there. The hook just missed because he was a little wide out, but no absence of effort forcing the pace all night. I have a chance. I want to thank our stage manager, Carla Welga. Carla did a great job tonight. We appreciate your help, Carla. Our statisticians, uh, Laura Taylor and Nobu Ikoshima, always a great help. And our ringside security coordinator, Pancho Lemon. All right, the fight continues to the ninth round. Evan the Holyfield to the right of your screen with his back to you. Lou Savarese facing you, now sliding around to the right of your screen. Big Lou up on his toes, still reluctant to throw the uppercuts and right hands that got him back in the fight. Lou Savarese down in the fourth round. Got back in the fight in the fifth. Actually won the sixth round. We thought he may have won the third round, but Evander's won every other round. And two points in the fourth round with a knockdown. Thus, I've got it 78-72. Lou needs a knockout to win. And he's not going to do it reaching with right hands like that. He's going to load up his right hand. And you look at Holofield when he delivers the goods. The outs, everything he puts in to that shot. You know something? When Evander loads up that left hook, if Luke can take a half step to his right and chop him with that right hand, he can catch him. Sure. Evander's open for the right hand. But you know something? Evander Holyfield's reflexes are much quicker than Luke's. And he's able to get away with it. He also rolls. He rolls when he throws that big hook. He rolls off to his right, so he avoids that right hand. So he's slick. He does a lot of things that you really need to watch what he's doing and have somebody explain it to you that probably knows a lot more than I do. But I know this guy's slick. All the little tricks he has, and there's a good uppercut coming in from Holofield. And you know, the sense right, right. of knowing a wounded opponent, that hasn't changed. He still comes in, and you know, he's winning, but he still senses he's getting to lose Savarese, so he continues to apply the pressure and tries to make it even more convincing. You know, I did the fight when Hector Camacho fought an aging Roberto Duran, and Al Bernstein was working with me. And I tried to make excuses. Uh, at least we're watching a Hall of Famer. Al says, Colonel, it's not even mildly interesting. This is interesting stuff. Right. Two guys right. over 40, and in Evander's case, well over 40. Lou Savarese, 41 years. Evander, 44. And neither one of them fighting like that. Look at Lou trying to get back in this fight. Right. But he needs right. to at least knock him down a couple of times right. and knock him out of my score sheet to win. Now he needs he needs the big one. And he had his moments in the middle rounds. But the problem for him is that Holofield got his second win, too, and started the pour down. That was a great right. left hook by Holofield after he shoved it over to the inside. Well, yeah, when they come to the inside, he banded gets himself right in position. He really loaded up that left hook. Lou's back was to us, and we couldn't see it flush. I think you glanced on your monitor that time. You got a better look at it than I did. But that was a nice left hook by Evander. Lou able to gobble it up to his credit as a professional. He's in terrific shape. It's all over. There's a left hook. Can he get up? It's up to four and five. You won't see a better left hook than that. Six and seven and eight. How did he get up from that? Whoa. Whoa. I haven't seen many better left hooks than that. The bell sounds. I thought it was all over. Man, oh man, Lou Savarese has surprised me twice tonight. Evander Holyfield has surprised Lou twice tonight with left hook. Left hook. Are you awake? You want to know something? I wouldn't let him come out for this. He can't win the fight without a knockout. He doesn't have the timing. He doesn't have the strength. Watch this, Dave. Right. It starts with the right hand and the left hook. Boom, boom. Hello? Goodbye. Look at that shot downstairs and great. Look at the, the, the twisting. One and the quick turn into the hook. 
got everything into it. That's beautiful. That is an absolutely picturesque oh. left hook on the button. You can't throw it any better than that. Right hand to the body, right oh. there away. The two punches in concert with each other. I never thought he'd come off the canvas with that. Lou Savary shows me tremendous height. This is Larry Holmes type height. Yep. I give him a lot of credit. If he can get through this round, I'll take my hat off to Lou Savary as a great, great competitor. Not the best of heavyweights in the history of heavyweight boxing, but by golly, he's got some kind of height. And I wish him well in his acting career, because he acted like a champ tonight, even though the four-time champ has taken him apart. His holy field, you can smell and sense the killer instinct that he been there. He wants to finish with a knockout. Blue's legs on totally back. He's got lead in his heels. He's got jelly in his knees. Evander looking to drop the left hook of the right hand. Lou tries to get the blood pumping through those legs, but it's not there. It's a question of time, and Evander is perfect to time it. Watch the half steps. Watch him line up. I bet if you look back on this fight sometime and count the punches, it will measure up well to some of Holyfield's fights from a decade or so ago. He's had the stamina. He's had the speed. Hasn't taken but maybe half of one round off. Two minutes to go. Loads up two right hands. He staggers Lou again. Lou continues to complain. He better fight, not complain. Left hook. Big left hook again by Evander. Loads up the right hand, and Lou goes down by a decision of punches. That's the third time he's been down tonight. Down in the fourth, down in the ninth. Back up again to beat Sakai of eight. They didn't, wait. they didn't call that one a knockdown. They so, waved it off. But, you know, it probably won't be academic. It is academic, Dave, because Evander's way out in front in this fight. We've seen... Less than knockdowns than I call knockdowns. Right, right. But that one wasn't right. official. But he continues to show the ruthless, punitive, predatory skills on the inside. Holofield is still going to rob you blind on the street when he gets on the inside. He'll go inside the jab and then just take everything away from you. Big thing that I've learned tonight, this 44-year-old man can get in shape. Here's the left hook. He's going to finish him right here. If Lou doesn't answer, the referee, Jesse Reyes, will have to stop the fight. He's reeling around the ring. Box! Box! He says box. And then coming in to finish it off. It's about time for the corner to say, that's it, Lou. This is the end of your career tonight. You don't have to take any more. Evander senses the kill again. Misses the left hook as he catches the right hand. A blue Savarese. There's the right hand. Evander the uppercut, my friend. And this one's over. 25 seconds. Can Lou Savarese mount one last big uppercut? Or can Evander finish it off with one last big left hook or right hand uppercut? Trying to time it. Running out of time now. The fighter cannot be saved with the bell in any round. So the count would continue. Here comes the final seconds of the fight. This has been a dramatic and I think a brilliant and a statement made by Evander Holyfield that he is on the scene. You don't need to listen to me. Look at the crowd. Hey, what a tremendous effort. And we got a glimpse of it when we saw his body in the dressing room and how he was at the weight he was about 20 years ago. And he put it all on the line tonight. What do we learn tonight, folks? A couple of important things. Evander Holyfield, to me, is back. Evander Holyfield is not the Holyfield that lost to James Tony. Evander Holyfield is not the Evander Holyfield that the New York State Athletic Commission suspended. Evander Holyfield's speech is clear again. Evander Holyfield's timing is back again. And his evidence of that, a fatigued fighter in the 10th round at 44 years of age, timing, positioning, power of punches, this is a guy who's not showing his 44 years of age. Granted, Savarish was a perfect opponent for him, but perfect opponent or not, Savarish really is dangerous at many, many different times in his career. And Evander Holyfield just really using him up right here. At any time, Savarish's corner could have stopped the fight. At any time, Jesse Reyes could have stopped the fight. I give a lot of credit to Lou Savarese, who put on a tremendous show in that he hung in there, he wouldn't die. 
Knocked down hard in the ninth round. Knocked down he uh, very hard in the fourth round. I didn't think he could continue after getting up in the fourth, and I never dreamed after that left hook that sent him tumbling to the canvas in the ninth that he could recover at all. All right, we have to make it official. Let's go to our ring announcer, Lupe Contreras. Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, the official scorecard reads as follows. Ray Hawkins scores it, 99-87. Jerry Wright, 98-90. And Glenn Crocker scores it, 96-91. All three for the winner, by way of unanimous decision. Evander. So 96, 91, 99, 87, 98, 90, and throw in my 98, 89, and it is a unanimous decision victory. But more important than the victory was the manner in which Evander fought, the manner in which his reflexes were there, the condition he was in. He did not fight like an aging 44-year-old man. This guy is back. I don't know how it's possible, but every time people say no to Evander Holyfield, he comes back. Watch the knockdowns as they unfolded in the fight. This is in the fourth round, and watch this. Boom, he nailed him with the right hand. Then back with the left hand. Then back again. Nails him with that shot. Then the uppercut. Blasts him again, and again, and then the right hand on the inside. And he's not done yet. Watch this. Boom. And then one to the body. And the heads did come together in the end, and Luke complains. And now we go to round number nine. And watch the left hook. He sets it up with a shot to the body, and look at that left hook. That left hook would have taken the head off of most fighters, and it certainly would have ended most guys' night. Let's go up to Dave Bontempo, who's standing.